Season of the Lost started on August 24th, 2021, and as of this week, we've officially finished the season's main story quest. While I don't think the story is fully over yet, since there are definitely a few more events that need to happen, I felt like now was a good time to share my thoughts on the season's experience so far and the current state of the game. Let's start with the good part. The story this season is once again a great continuation of the last season's narrative. This is possibly the biggest narrative tie-in that we've ever had with past content, specifically in this case with Osiris, aka Sabathun, Saint-14, Crow, Mara, Petra, everything. Mara and Petra finally returned as well after a long hiatus, and we got our first proper interactions with the most anticipated antagonist in the Destiny universe, Sabathun. I'm specifically avoiding the term villain here, since this season seems to be tapping a lot into the grey area between light and dark and between good and evil. In week 1 we were already greeted with a phenomenal cutscene featuring Savathun telling us that we're not good and she's not evil, and for the rest of the season she taps into that morally grey area between the two. I loved our weekly conversations with Savathun. It's the first time that Bungie has built an antagonist before their main expansion, and it's certainly going to make the Witch Queen's narrative pay off much more than any story that we've had previously. I'm also very interested to see what's going to happen with Crow, now that Sabathun has given him the memories of Aldrin Salve. While he's definitely a different person than Aldrin was, Mara is right in saying that he tends to act similarly to Aldrin from time to time. Crow's story arc throughout the year has been a very interesting one to follow, and I'm really excited to see where it's going to go. I hope we get more on Crow somewhere this season. There is one thing that I'm very, very disappointed in though, and that's how the final Wayfinder's Voyage quest ended just this week. Both Chosen and Splicer were praised for their story, and a very good reason for that praise was because there was a new story update every week, and by the end of the story quest, we had a satisfying ending. Of course, the story wasn't always fully finished, like we had with the epilogue in Season of the Splicer, but the story felt wrapped up at the end of the quest with a satisfying conclusion. Season of the Lost does the exact opposite. We didn't have any real story progression in the final week. All that we were told is that we need to wait for a cosmic alignment before the exorcism of Savathun's worm can begin, and that we won't be allowed to speak to Savathun again until then. We get given a sparrow, and then the story just... ends. Now, normally I would be sort of okay with this stuff, it's something that Bungie has done before, because now we can spend some time theory crafting on what's going to happen, we can let it all sink in, we have some time to play the seasonal activities before we get to the ending of the story. However, we already know what's going to happen this time. Bungie revealed the Witch Queen expansion and they revealed what the main plot point of that is going to be. We know that we will exercise Savathun's worm, she will betray us somehow, and then she'll find a way to wield the light. Of course, the exact path to get to that point, we don't know that, and we don't know any specifics when it comes to that, but we know enough about the conclusion of this story that this quote-unquote cliffhanger is meaningless. I still think the writing this season has been really good, and I'm very excited for the Witch Queen story, but I hope to God that we're not going to have to wait until December to get our story conclusion for this season. I feel like if we don't continue this story now, and if we don't get more development now, the Witch Queen story is going to suffer for it because we've had such a big break from any narrative updates. I really hope that doesn't happen. Regardless of how good the story was, this time around Bungie told the story through two main activities, very similar to how Season of the Splicer did it. We had a six-player match made activity with Astral Alignment, and then a solo rotating story mission called the Shattered Realm. Let's start with the match made activity, Astral Alignment. While this activity definitely fixed some of the gripes I had with Override, namely when it comes to enemy density and a lack of interesting and engaging mechanics, Something about this activity made me way less interested in it than I was in Override. The biggest one of these reasons was the reward system. 
Astral Alignment exists completely outside of the seasonal gameplay loop, excluding the weekly story quest. With Override, you played it to farm decrypted data so that you could upgrade your Splicer Gauntlet and focus on the Engrams. This season does the exact opposite, with the rewards from Astral Alignment costing you Parallax Trajectory to obtain rather than giving you some. This meant that if you wanted to farm weapons or upgrade your compass, you had to essentially do anything but the seasonal activity. Let me repeat that. If you wanted to farm the seasonal weapons, the last thing you should be doing is playing the seasonal activity. This is possibly the worst reward system that I've seen in a season so far. Even in Season of the Hunt, you were playing the seasonal activity more than you are now, and you had a direct path to the weapons and armor that you wanted to obtain. It genuinely baffles me that they spent so much effort on designing a six-player activity, and then proceed to give you no reason to play it more than once a week, maybe a few extra if you wanted to go for the seasonal challenges or the exotic quest or the catalyst, but that's it. The activity doesn't even offer you a pinnacle reward like Override did. Don't get me wrong, I think the activity itself is pretty solid. The encounters are fun, enemy density is much higher than it was in Override, especially in the boss room. The bosses themselves are also much more engaging than the ones from Override. Basically, almost every single issue I had with Override was fixed with Astral Alignment. However, in a classic Bungie fashion, it's one step forward and two steps back. It really is a shame to see such a solid activity be rid of any reason to play it from day one of the season. Luckily though, there was another activity this season. Shattered Realm was the more traditional mission-style experience, very similar to Expunge and to Presage, though Shattered Realm is different. It's almost as if Bungie looked at the secrets and puzzles spread throughout the Dreaming City and thought, what if we made an entire activity filled with puzzles like that? And then Shattered Realm was born. I absolutely love how non-linear these missions are. Sure, you have two beacons to activate and then a boss at the end, but you're free to explore every inch of the map and you will most likely find something interesting in all of those inches. While the activity itself doesn't have much going on combat-wise, as it's essentially just two waves of ad clear and then a boss fight, I found myself stuck in this activity for sometimes 30 minutes straight, if not more, every single week trying to find new secrets. While I'm usually not a big fan of time gating, I really enjoyed that when each mission came back for a second time, that we had more powers and more abilities to explore the area with. This really made me want to come back every week to see if I could find something new, and I was never disappointed. I also love how the secrets escalated in complexity and difficulty every week, starting with just a simple barrier protecting a chest that you can pass through with the barrier breach buff, to you having to input an entire symbol sequence into portals to dunk a fire orb into a totem, to then kill a boss and grab another fire orb and dunk it into another totem. You get what I'm saying, puzzles got more complicated every week, but because there was such a nice difficulty curve between them, it never felt like they were hard to solve, and it was always very engaging to solve. While these missions didn't have much replay value to them, outside of the first time every week to do the story quest and finding new secrets, and maybe doing it again to get your pinnacle, I still think this was a phenomenally designed activity. If this is any prelude to what exploring Savathun's throne world is going to be like in Witch Queen, I am very much on board and I can't wait to see how that destination turns out. Next up, let's talk Trials. Before I continue, I must preface that I am not a PvP player, and I probably never will be. I play PvP for pinnacles and seasonal challenges when I need to, but outside of that I generally avoid it at all costs. However, the Trials rework this season piqued my interest, so I figured that I would give it a shot. Needless to say, outside of the current meta being stacked Warlocks with Arc Souls, which is absolutely fucking terrible, I had a pretty good time playing Trials this season. I went flawless two times over the course of the first three weeks that Trials was available, and I played roughly 20 games each week. 
I know that's not too many, but it's good enough to get a glimpse of what the experience is like. Let's start with the loot system. It's probably the best loot system that we've seen, not just in Trials or in PvP, but in Destiny as a whole. Get an engram by playing the game, pick the weapon or armor piece you want, and then move on. The grind for Adept weapons was also made much nicer after you get your first Flawless of the week. It only requires a 7-win passage to buy another, regardless of whether that is a Flawless passage, essentially meaning that every Flawless as well now gives double Adept weapons because you can also trade in your passage. While this didn't happen to me during my playtime, I also like the fact that you can continue to farm Adept weapons after a Flawless if you get more wins on that same card. They've really done a good job at incentivizing all players to not reset their card. Casual players won't want to reset because they get more reputation from a card within more rounds won, and hardcore players won't want to reset their card because a 7-win passage will still grant them an adept weapon after their first flawless, and even after that first flawless they can keep going 4 wins on that same passage to get even more adept weapons. While I'm not really qualified to talk about the matchmaking changes made over the course of the season, or the capture point mode introduced in Trials Labs recently, I will say that it didn't feel very good consistently matching against solo players on my first card each week while I was in a 3-stack, since those matches felt incredibly easy. I also tried solo queuing a bit in the third week, and that also simply just doesn't feel fair that solo players can and will constantly match against 3-stacks. However, Bungie has been talking about a Freelance Trials playlist coming hopefully somewhere later in October, so I don't think we need to worry about that for much longer. All in all, I think Bungie did a great job on the Trials rework, but if you're someone who actually plays PvP, please feel free to disagree with me in the comments below. Next up, let's talk loot. Overall, this year we've been treated pretty well. While Beyond Light and Season of the Hunt were a little light, pun intended, on interesting weapons, we still had a few new cool perks that we use today, like Reconstruction and One for All. Chosen and Splicer, however, were jam-packed with weapons that I was genuinely interested in farming, and with cool new perks that dropped on those new weapons. Season of the Lost, compared to that, feels like a downgrade. Don't get me wrong, there's still some good in there, but the overall offering is definitely a step down from what they've been giving us the rest of this year. While there are some interesting new perks, practically all of them already have variants in the game that can do the same thing, but better or with less strict trigger conditions. Harmony and Headstone are probably the only two that you could genuinely use and form a build around. But since the weapons that use those perks aren't really that good, I still didn't find a reason to use them. There are a couple of outliers this season though, mainly Ascendancy, the ritual weapon this season. Even though it fell flat in the first few weeks of the season, after Explosive Light got readjusted, it turned to one of the best burst damage options in the game currently. Fractithis, the legendary shotgun from this season's Umbral Engrams and from Astral Alignment, has also been seeing a lot of use on the PvP side of the game, being probably one of the most consistent kinetic shotguns that's currently available. Outside of that though, there really isn't much there. The revamp trials of the nine weapons from Prophecy are cool, but none of them really stand out to me. The weapons from Astral Alignment are cool, but once again, none of them are really weapons that could replace already existing weapons that you're using right now. Basically, every single weapon seems to be outperformed by an already existing weapon, except for a handful. Whereas in previous seasons, it felt like almost every single weapon replaced currently existing weapons, and only a few fell flat, and only a few were outperformed by already existing weapons. It feels like the exact opposite from what we've been offered in Splicer and Chosen. I hope that the 30th Anniversary Pack will be a return to the loot that we saw during the rest of the year, because if the 30th Anniversary Pack doesn't feature any loot that's interesting, we're going to have some issues in these final few months of the season. Even though I didn't really want to farm the loot this season because it wasn't that interesting, I still want to talk about the way that Umbral Engrams were handled. While it still doesn't make sense to me that Astral Alignment Chests cost Parallax Trajectory to open, 
The Umbral Engram system outside of that is probably the best implementation that we've had for them this year. However, it's still just not good. Last season, the biggest issue I had with Umbral Engrams was that the double perk weapons were extremely hard to farm, because you could only get three chances per character per week from completing Corrupted Expunges. This season, however, double perk focusing is back on the menu, and in fact, the double perk can now roll in both the third and fourth column, including both columns at the same time. This is great for farming god rolls, if you could actually farm it. Not only is the cost for tier 3 focusing absolutely ridiculous, especially when the parallax trajectory cap was still at 1500 in the first week of the season, but they're also capped again. Luckily, Bungie was extremely generous this time around and decided not to cap it at 3 per week, but a groundbreaking 4 tier 3 Umbral Engram focuses. I was not expecting this level of kindness from Bungie, and I'm truly grateful. This cap was bugged at the start of the season, and for a brief moment, I thought that Bungie had figured it out, but soon after, it was fixed. Bungie, please, I beg of you. Season of Arrivals is still the best implementation of Umbrals that we have seen to date. Double perk focusing was unlimited, and it came at a very reasonable price. Should you ever decide to do Umbral Engrams again, go back to the format we had in Arrivals. However, I realize that Bungie has a very good reason for not spending much time on tweaking and improving Umbral Engrams, because weapon crafting is most likely going to replace the Umbral system in future seasons once it releases in Witch Queen. Therefore, I, I understand they don't put too much development time for a feature that would only last for about one more season, but I don't think that that's an excuse since Umbral Engrams have been used the entire year and we've already had a good implementation of them before in Season of Arrivals. I hope that the loot from the Dares of Eternity activity in the Anniversary Pack doesn't come from Umbral Engrams, and if it does, I hope that they implement it slightly differently, at least with more proper focusing, especially around the Tier 3 end. Now that I'm somewhat done talking about the seasonal content offering, I wanted to take some time to talk about the general state of the game as a whole. A lot of people were incredibly excited about the season when it first released, as was I, but I'll be honest with you, this is the least amount of Destiny that I have played since the launch of Beyond Light. I played the new weekly reset content when it came out, I did a few raids here and there, played a little bit of Trials, but outside of that, that was it. As of writing this video, I've only just passed Season Rank 70, I'm not even 1330 yet on my Titan, and I'm not even a high enough power level for the GM Nightfalls that started just now. Something this season felt... off. None of the content this season is particularly bad in any way. In fact, most of it is actually pretty solid. Sure, the loot system could use some work, but it's far from a bad season, right? I tried my best to figure out what the reason could be that I just wasn't interested in playing Destiny anymore this season, and I think that I found a couple of them. First of all, every season usually has something, some activity, that hooks me to the game for a few weeks. Arrivals came with the Prophecy Dungeon, Beyond Light came with Deepstone Crypt, Chosen came with Presage, and the reintroduction of Devil's Lair, which is, still to this day, my favorite strike and my favorite Nightfall ever made. Splicer had the return of Vault of Glass, but this season has... nothing. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed Shattered Realm and I enjoyed Astral Alignment, but I just had no interest in playing it after the weekly story was done. Maybe this is just my long-awaited Destiny burnout finally catching up to me a few years too late, but I personally don't think that's it. I'm still very invested in the game and I'm still extremely excited for both the 30th Anniversary Pack and the Witch Queen expansion. I'm already planning for the next day one raid and for the next day one dungeon, I'm already making builds for it, I'm still totally planning to be as invested into the game as I've always been, but it's just that nothing this season felt like it was worth playing outside of experiencing the story except for maybe the first playthrough of the Shattered Realm. To quote Datto talking about the game around the mid Shadowkeep era, there's so much to do, but none of it matters. 
I feel like that quote really summarizes the season for me so far. I spend most of my time playing old activities, old raids, old dungeons, old nightfalls, trials. Sure, trials got a rework, but it's still just trials. It's been in the game for over a year now. I spent roughly two hours every week interacting with this season's content, playing the new weekly mission, replaying Shadow Realm to find all the secrets, maybe doing the exotic quest and getting the catalyst, but that was really it. I really hope that the anniversary pack is a little more engaging, but considering we're getting a new raid or dungeon every three months, starting with the 30th anniversary pack, I think we're going to be fine on that front. It's just that this season is really missing that aspirational endgame activity for me that hooks me to the game. There's another big issue with this season though. It's not necessarily with this season alone, because it's something that many people have already complained about before. I just didn't really care about that complaint until now. The seasonal artifact is dumb. I'm not talking about the mods. The mods are a great way to switch everything up a bit every season. Sure, the champion mods could definitely use some work because this season's selection is so downright terrible outside of Overload Bow that I don't even want to bother interacting with any champion-based content. My main issue with the artifact is the power bonus. While I originally liked the idea of an infinite power grind, especially when there's content that goes well above the maximum light level like GM Nightfalls and Master Vault of Glass, because I haven't engaged much with the game this season at all, I'm starting to suffer the consequences from the seasonal artifact. Even though I'd love to be playing GM Nightfalls right now, and I would love to be doing Master Fog again, I simply can't because my power isn't high enough. While I should probably still be fine in Master Fog, Grandmaster level content is legitimately inaccessible to me because I don't meet the power requirements. While I'm 100% in favor for Master and Grandmaster level content existing difficulty-wise, the power level requirements at this point are just bullshit. I don't want to have to play the game extensively for six weeks straight just so that I can gain access to content that I've already gained access to about six times previously. When a new season starts, I want to play the new content, get some new weapons, and then take them into the endgame content. I don't want to have to farm bounties and feel forced to complete every single seasonal challenges just to play that old content again six weeks later. The cycle needs to stop. Even though GM Nightfalls are a niche content only enjoyed by a few players, and even though they're already more than a year old at this point, I still enjoy playing many of them and I wish that the barrier to entry wouldn't be so high. I would love to see Bungie dropping the artifact bonus completely and instead just setting a 10, 20, and 25 level contest modifier on content like this scaling with difficulty. GM Nightfalls already have a contest modifier anyway. Why do they even have such an absurd power requirement in the first place if it literally doesn't matter? Can't they just lower the minimum requirement to enter by 15 levels and still set that contest modifier to the 25 that it is on now? All in all, I'm just tired of doing the same old shit every fucking season. I should be spending time in the new content, not playing old content for bounties and seasonal challenges just so that I can play more old content. It feels like this season does about everything it possibly can to discourage playing the seasonal content. And I think that's why I simply can't give this season a positive review in the end. However, I don't want to leave this video on a negative note because most of the issues that I have with this season are things that I know Bungie is working on fixing, or at least I'm pretty confident Bungie is working on fixing. We're already getting a new raid or dungeon every single season starting in December with the anniversary pack and that's certainly going to improve the game for me because that is going to fix the issue where a season doesn't come with an aspirational activity to hook me. If all of them also include a master variant and the power grind gets slightly readjusted to not be such a mess, I think the game would be in a very good state for me right now. And we know that most of that is going to happen sooner rather than later, so I have full faith that this season was just a slight miss in a series of hits. That about wraps up my thoughts on the current state of the game. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you listening to me ranting about the game for, what, 25 minutes on end? What are we at? 24, 25 minutes? 
I really like sharing my thoughts on the game, and especially right now when I just have some glaring issues with the game that I want to vent about. This is a great place to do it. I'm definitely going to make more videos like this in the future, because I really enjoy writing them. If you want to discuss some things about the game more with me personally, join my Discord. The link will be in the description. I am probably always available to rant about the game or to disagree with your opinion. And if you like this type of content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.